I want to ask you this question, and of course I'll answer it, right? What does it mean to abhor what is evil? As the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 9. You see, the Apostle Paul in the book of uh, Romans, uh, chapter 12, from verse 9, uh, basically just going downwards, uh, he said something here, and uh, let, me, let me just read it for you. Romans 12 from verse 9 to 21, it says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to uh, one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope patient in uh, tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, continuing to the necessity of saints, uh, actually distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but uh, consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but uh, overcome evil with good. So now, having looked at that passage, we see that the Apostle Paul presents a series of short exhortations that concentrate on living and loving sacrificially in every situation, in all relationships. He begins with his appeal. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, and hold fast to what is good. Now, when you look at that, it is good to understand that Paul's teaching stresses that people who overcome evil with sincere love bear the marks of a true Christian. In the original language, the word translated as abhor means to find repugnant hate, loath, dislike, and have a horror of the term for evil in Romans chapter 12 verse 9 speaks of morally objectionable behavior and the appropriate Christian uh, attitude towards evil behavior is vehement opposition to the point of being horrified by it and feeling hatred towards it as Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 that believers are to reject every kind of evil it is important to know that abhorring what is evil entails rejecting or hating sinful behavior believers are not to reject or hate sinful people who do evil only their immoral behavior you're not supposed to hate the sinner you're supposed to hate the sin even jesus himself he dined with sinners but he hated the sin. He always corrected them. He became the light in darkness. And through the prophet Amos, God told the people of Israel to turn away from their corrupt behavior. If they would do what is good and run from evil, then they would live. In the book of Amos 5 verse 14, it says, Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper, just as you have claimed. You see, some people want to believe in Jesus halfway. I can believe in Jesus as my Savior, but I can believe that Jesus heals. I want to believe as, in Jesus as my uh, Savior, but I, I don't think he can provide for me. I have to steal. I have to do evil things. Come on. God doesn't have double standards. When he says I will do, he's going to do exactly that. So, back in the days, the children of Israel, if they would go against the prevailing immorality, if they would hate evil behavior and instead love what is good, honest and righteous, 
If they would uphold justice instead of caution it, then the Lord would be with them to defend them rather than to judge them. The Bible in the book of Amos uh, chapter 5 verse 10, it says, They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly, for as much therefore as your trading is upon the poor, and you take from him burdens of wheat, you have built houses of hewn uh, stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted, you have uh, planted, uh, you have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine of them, for I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, and they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gaze from their right. You see what God is saying? You keep on saying that you love God, but you're doing opposite. God will not be with you. But when you do what is right, then God is going to be with you. It's just like a family. When you're in good uh, position or good, uh, you know, right standing with your parents, your father, your mother, they're going to love you and they're going to give you some favors. But what if you do what is wrong and what they don't like? Are they going to bless you? Are they going to give you gifts and love you back? And of course they love you, yes, because they are your parents, but are they going to be pleased with you? No. So we are in a family, the family of God, and God hates evil. God hates evil. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 5, verse 4 to 6, For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with you. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and the deceitful man. And of course, the Bible also continues in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. It says, These six things does the Lord hate. Yeah, seven that are abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed blood, innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness, and so forth. So you see, God does not love evil. And even David, he said, Oh God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the sins of the wicked in Psalms 5 verse 4. Because God is holy. He hates sin and he hates wickedness. Scripture says that God is love. Yes, in John 4 verse 8, 1 John 4 8, and also, uh, let me just read for you, 1 John 4 8, he says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And also, 1 John 4 16, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. But having looked at that, we also have to understand that God also teaches that he is a righteous judge. Psalms 7 verse 11, he says, God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. He doesn't love wickedness because God is holy. Psalms 99 verse 9, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill for the Lord our God is holy. So if he's holy, is he going to stay in a place where there is wickedness? No. His wrath against evil is as much as part of his character as his love. And the love of God is pure and holy. And the Lord loves justice, truth, righteousness, and holiness. And therefore must he must hate wickedness, sin, and evil. If God did not abhor what is evil, he could not be a God of holy love. Therefore, those who have genuine love for God will also abhor what is evil. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 97 verse 10, Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of the faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. David pledged, I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. In the book of Psalms 101 verse 3. And when we come face to face with 
evil behavior. God wants us to hate it so much that we refuse to take part in it. As we consider the things that uh, we watch on television or look at uh, online, is there anything vile, evil, or repugnant to God? When we think about the behaviors we engage in alone or with other people, are there activities the Lord will want us to have no part in? The Bible teaches us to separate ourselves from the unclean things of the world. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 11, it says, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch not unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. Do you know that God lives in you? So why are you living in wickedness? Why are you touching evil things? And 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 17, it says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Don't touch any unclean thing. James 4, verse 8, it says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hmm. So, the Bible tells us very well that we should be separate from the world. We should look different. We should do differently. If the world is going north, let us go south. Because the world is controlled by the God of this world. The small G God who is Satan is the one who is controlling this world. When the world tells you, do evil, it's okay. It is okay to lie. Tell them, no, my Father in heaven doesn't want me to lie. Because the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians 7, uh, 7 verse 1 that we should cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit and let us work towards complete holiness because we fear God. Our genuine love for the Lord and the other people ought to motivate us in every circumstance and relationship to abhor what is evil and to hold fast to what is good. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you didn't learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website keithmuoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one. Thank you.